I guess I was uh, starting to say that life is short and the work is more important to me now than ever. You know, the nice thing about uh, this stage of my life um, is that knowing that I've been doing the same thing for 50 years um, makes me feel that uh, there's a reason I'm doing it. I'm not exactly sure what the reason is, but there is a reason I'm doing it and that it's my own. Uh, it's not done for any uh, commercial reason um, and it's not done, you know, for any fashionable reason, it's just done because it, 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 it uh, the metaphor is that it, it, it balances, it creates, a, it creates a work of art, a visual work of art that, that creates balance, which is what I try to achieve in my chaotic, uh, my chaotic life. I have been uh, a painter uh, since uh, 1971. So, this recording is on the occasion of my uh, show at the Pleiades Gallery in New York City. And the show is called Just a Song. And it's uh, a show of about 30 pieces uh, representing the last year and a half's work. All the pieces have been created um, during uh, the lockdown and uh, the COVID crisis that uh, we, are, we have been through and we're still in to some extent. And uh, the pieces are um, all um, manufactured uh, from uh, using a computer program. And I've just, uh, over the last 10 years or so, uh, have uh, transitioned to the digital media so that uh, I could uh, explore uh, my images a little bit um, more uh, organically. Show just a song because I um, want people who are not uh, comfortable with abstract modern art to understand that there's nothing more to think about or look about or look at than to just uh, consider him a song and uh, don't worry about the meaning, don't worry about what it looks like, um, just try to enjoy the uh, the beauty and the beat and the, and the rhythm and. Um, and, and just the visual. So um, I don't have a studio these days. I've worked um, in my paintings. I haven't painted in about a year or two. Uh, my paintings I usually did in a, a studio in, in Connecticut, in Westport, Connecticut. Um, I, you know, will probably continue painting when I can. But right now, I'm just totally enamored by this this medium. Basically, all the pieces you're going to see in the show um, are about the same theme and that's uh, chaos and order coexisting um, and an equal balance and I try to achieve balance in all these pieces so when you look at the pieces that's really all I'm trying to ever uh, uh, achieve and um, even though I use a, a digital medium I try to keep it very loose I try to have my hand in it um, and I play around a lot with, uh, with the textures that can be created and um, this piece is called weight and um, it's a play on chaos and order and, and, and the grid and, and the basic circle and the square that people have been doing for the last millennium. So uh, this series is all uh, variations on a theme. Uh, this piece is called Yes It Is, um, just changing uh, the colors and the contrast. Um, again, this next piece is called Tomorrow Never Knows. And, um, all of, uh, it, just a, a question of um, emphasizing and de-emphasizing um, the foreground and the middle ground and the far ground and the background. Um, what I like about this piece, it's called Tell Me Why, uh, is that um, it does the same thing with, uh, without color. Now, one of the amazing things about the digital medium is that I can change colors and I get a lot of unexpected uh, surprises, which is really uh, thrill to me. But I've also started to do is loosen up the edges so that the edges of the images are soft as well. Um, so trying to keep it, trying to get as much of my hand in there as, as possible. And in case I didn't tell you, um, every piece in this show is named after a Beatle tune. This series on this wall uh, are, is a montage uh, of, um, in, the, in the show basically I'm using circles and targets. So both circular elements uh, contrasting with the square grid. And, uh, and this I'm able to incorporate my um, photography. So the image that you see is a, 
kind of a superimposition of a target in three colors, red, yellow, and blue. Uh, they all have uh, different names. Uh, it's, they stand alone or they're meant to be one piece. And um, the image that you see here was taken uh, with my iPhone in San Gimignano, uh Italy. Um, and it was just a random brick wall that I walked past that was done in the 14th, 15th century. And I brought it back and superimposed the grid, superimposed the target, and uh, made it my own. Um, with a lot of these images, I like, I like texture. And um, I like to contract, contrast, contrast texture with other elements. And it occurred to me that there's a lot of texture in nature. So this is a, a photograph of pebbles that were taken um, in Madrid, uh, no, in Barcelona. Uh, in the Barcelona Pavilion, which is the first modern piece of architecture by Mies van der Rohe. And uh, it's in the, in the reflecting pool. And I took that and excerpted it and superimposed the target over it. And lo and behold, um, I got another, another image. And it's called Think for Yourself. Um, this piece is a, a complex piece. It's a brick wall in New York City, but the bricks uh, protrude out and they're curved. And um, I caught it at a time when the sun was uh, coming in in a direction, casting these shadows, superimposed the grid, and voila, you have another uh, piece called You Won't See Me. So that's it for the, um, that's it for the photographic elements. As you can see, this gets back to those first pieces that were done with uh, squiggles and building up texture with squiggles. These, these were done more with dots, um, but still utilizing um, all the, you know, the circular elements in the grid. Um, this piece is called Eight Days a Week, which is my life, and this piece is called The End, which is very uh, meaningful. And in this piece, you know, you can't tell what is foreground, what is middle ground, and what is background, and um, that's the ambiguity that, that I kind of achieved, but hopefully it's, it's balanced. These three pieces were supposed to be, these, this, this predates the pandemic. This was supposed to be in a show that never happened because of the pandemic. And I include it here because um, I think they were inspiration basically for all the other pieces. So these, uh, these pieces are red, yellow, and blue, which is a, a theme I've used you know, a couple of times. Um, and uh, a circle, square, and a triangle, which are basic forms. And what I've been able to do is manipulate the layers and create a, a foreground, background situation that you know that is very, I don't know, uh, basic, basic and primal and childlike. But um, all the work that you see here after this came from these three pieces, which is why it's in the show. On this other wall, uh, we have. An exploration of this kind of what I call horizontal lines. It's kind of like a screen, maybe like a Japanese screen that you're always looking through, and you're looking through several uh, elements. You're looking through uh, things that have been erased and squiggles and and and, uh, and, a, and a circle to be a dominant element. And there's lots of things going on. And um, what's, all three pieces are, are individual pieces. Uh, this piece with the purple and red is called I've Got a Feeling. Um, and what amazes me is I would have never, uh, painting it, I would have never known to really make this color combination. Uh, it's just a surprise. You'll see a couple others in a few minutes that also just surprise me. The, these two pieces are interesting because they're kind of the reverse of each other. Um, this piece is called Getting Better. Um, and again, um, it's like looking through something, like you're looking through a screen. Um, throughout you know, modern art history, there's always been that open window that Matisse made famous. And so you're always looking through things. These are not an open window, but there is a window shape that you're looking through. These two pieces are, are one off. This piece is called In My Life. It's the per first piece that I actually minted as a, an NFT, if you're interested in that. And it's similar to the others, but I've taken off that veil, uh, that layer, uh, so you can see the basic element. 
And what's amazing about this medium is, is that I, I manipulate one piece to the next piece to the next piece. It's constantly like working on, on, on the same piece, but what you see each time is something very, very different. Uh, never preconceived, always organic, always uh, done in the middle of the night, four o'clock in the morning. Um, and uh, it's all just playful kind of stuff. Um, these are fairly recent pieces, similar to the piece at the beginning. Um, it's meant to be one piece, it can be taken as other. This piece here is called Tell Me What You See. This is Good Day Sunshine, and this one is called Something. All tunes of the Beatles songs. And again, it's those elements, um, and instead of doing a horizontal layer, or instead of doing a scribble, in this I, I've used these three or four layers of basic colors of broad strokes done randomly and not repetitively. I've used the whole frame as opposed to repeating uh, you know, one of the grid modules. And uh, what you see is a lot of chaos and what you see is a lot of order and uh, hopefully they work at the same time and they coexist. These pieces uh, relate back, I guess, to the circles we just saw, but these are targets. And again, um, the color combinations are a complete mystery and a surprise to me. Uh, they're very different from one another. I like them both very much. This one contains a lot of texture. We've, I, I started playing around with mesotints, uh, so taking away from the flat surface. One thing you know, I can say about this medium is I, I use a large-scale photo printer. Uh, it, it's an Epson large-scale photo printer. It's archival, which means that it uses pigment inks. It doesn't use uh, uh, dye inks, which, which fade in time. These things are, you know, have a 200-year lifespan. And the, the actual image looks like a silk screen. It, it just has a very uh, beautiful uh, quality to it. Um, just like a painting, you know, the surface of the painting has. So these are variations on a theme, but you know, I think it just shows you the range of the medium. If you look, the only consistency is the green and the blue in the background, but everything else is uh, new and unexpected. And what happens too is you get a lot of these random surprises, uh, not heading for perfection, just heading for uh, playing around and, 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 and achieving the right result. Uh, these are fairly recent pieces too. Um, these pieces uh, were based upon a, a, a little piece of a painting that was blown up, retraced, combining the target with, um, with crosshatch, which if you're familiar with modern art is, is a theme that some artists have used, combined with the grid and um, manipulated with the colors and, and made my own. Uh, one of the reasons I used uh, the target uh, is because, <laughs> because uh, a man named Jasper Johns, about 50 years ago, 60 years ago, uh, used the target and he owned it. And no one was ever allowed to use the target. And it sort of bothered me. The target doesn't belong to him. It uh, doesn't belong to target the company. And, and I saw no reason not to challenge myself and try to use the target and make something else with it. Maybe I'll do the flag next. I don't know. I just... Uh, but that's basically it. Again, this last piece here is called I'm Looking Through You. And um, what's nice about it is, is again, unex completely unexpected colors. I work a lot with the basic colors, but I change back and forth. And what amazed me here was that, again, with this medium, if you look at this piece, the, ed the edges are very rigid and cut off. If you look at this piece, I'm able to draw with outside the line which is something I used to do before kindergarten and I'm trying to do again. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a medium that I, I just think has endless possibilities. Uh, it doesn't dictate the image, I dictate the image. These are all things I've been doing for the last 50 years. I just have this tool that I love and that's why I'm sort of saying, let's just stay with this for a while. And you can see um, the variation that, that, that comes with this. So what are the plans for the future? Uh, different styles or, you know? I have some ideas, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs>